I wanted to laud you and the members of the Congressional Black Caucus for all of the tremendous work on behalf of our families, on behalf of children, on behalf of communities. I wanted to just point out one additional thing that you have worked on as the chair of the subcommittee on um, uh, crime, crime and uh, other issues in the Judiciary Committee and for your tremendous uh, leadership on this. As you know, um, in your capacity on the Judiciary Committee last year, the United States saw the highest increase in gun homicides since national record keeping began. That was in 2020. And sadly, we're still on track to see that number continue to increase this year. Well, this violence, Mr. Speaker, falls disproportionately on young black men. Even though we make up only 6% of the U.S. population, we account for about 50% of gun homicide victims. Now, those statistics aren't just numbers, they're lives. And they're lives that every one of us should be held account to account for. For me as a black man, raising three children with my wife, two sons and a daughter, it hits me very directly because this is what we worry about every single day when our children leave our homes. Because these are our friends, they are our children. Well, I'm proud, Mr. Speaker, that the Congressional Black Caucus made this issue a priority and we went to President Biden and to Vice President Harris and we talked to them about the need to stop the onslaught of deaths. And he listened. He listened and he included $5 billion of funding and a bill that I'm proud to have sponsored along with my colleagues, the Break the Cycle of Violence Act, which funds community-based violence intervention programs to save lives. Now this is proven to work. These are community-based programs and partnerships with faith-based community-based organizations to provide mental health and wellness, job training and placement and intervention programs so that when we pass the Build Back Better Act, it will include $5 billion of funding over eight years and an additional amount of funding specifically for workforce development and placement. So for months now, we have negotiated in good faith we have worked with our colleagues, we have listened. Now it is time for us to move forward. No more delays, no more excuses about process, no more focusing on personalities here in Washington. Let's focus on the people and the policy that will benefit them and their lives. Four years ago, when the Republicans were in control of the White House, the House and the Senate, they used their majority to pass tax cuts for the wealthiest 1% and the biggest corporations in our country. Today, Democrats, we're in the majority and our priority is to deliver for the people. I'm proud to work with my colleagues in the Congressional Black Caucus and the House Democrats to deliver this historic package. We are gonna get it done and I yield back to the gentle lady from Texas. We're excited about this violence uh, emphasis, and as I uh, conclude my remarks, so let me uh, pay tribute uh, to deputies uh, in my district that were shot by an AR-15. We pray for them and their families, and we should understand that violence has to end. And at the same time, let's take the words of John Robert Lewis, who sat with us on this floor for more than 27 years, and in his last life, he said to all of us, the Congressional Black Caucus, that's what we're going to do, carry on. We're going to carry on to make sure that we bring transformative, transformative legislation, not only to the American people, but to African Americans and people of color to change their lives forever. That's what Build Back is, and that's what the bipartisan bill is. We will work to make sure we cross the T's and dot the I's, carry on. I yield back.